Last week, the Fed raised interest rates, and as a result, your home is now worth 50% of what it was before. In addition to that, you'll probably never be able to buy a house again because rates have skyrocketed and home prices are just horrible. I'm kidding. <laughs> No. That's not what happened. I'm Matthew Parsons, Knoxville real estate expert, and I'm here today with Lindsay Whitworth with Mortgage Investors Group. And we're going to deconstruct really quickly. We're going to go ahead and deconstruct exactly what happened when the Fed changed rates and how it impacts you. And no, things, the sky is not falling. So here we go. So Lindsay, let's talk about really quick what did actually happen and then we'll talk about how it impacts the people watching this video. Right, yes, so thank you for that great intro. Last week, the Fed, the Federal Reserve, uh, raised interest rates by three quarters of a point, 75 basis points. And what that means is that's the rate at which banks borrow money overnight. So we did not see a increase in mortgage interest rates. And unfortunately, when that that goes out in the media, that's what people think, right. right? Like mortgage rates. I got a text from a client that's already under contract, locked her rate in um, a few weeks ago. She said, does this impact me? No, it does not impact you. Okay. One, she's already locked in. Right. And then two, the reason the Fed is, you know, having these meetings is to talk about inflation and inflation numbers came out last week, a week before, and they were higher than anticipated. So. It was rumored that the Fed would raise the rates by 75 basis points, and they did. Throughout the rest of this year, they will meet four more times and possibly, again, raise the rates even higher, which should, again, help the markets be a little bit more stable, curb the inflation. So then, so we've got that Fed funds rate, and then we've also got the mortgage rate. And right. those are gonna be two separate things, but usually somewhat connected. Right. In a way connected because the way that the Fed funds rate moves impacts what investors do with their money, if they're investing in mortgage backed securities okay. or not. OK, so you talked about that. We're going to probably see the Fed meet three or four more times this year. Right. When they meet, we're going to see them uh, talk about raising the rates. So right. what do we see as a possibility happening? They're probably going to continue to raise the Fed rate right. over the next couple times. And so what kind Correct. of impact do you think that we'll see on mortgage rates? So the hope is that by them raising the rate, the Fed fund rate would continue to help inflation, right? So inflation is not good for mortgage backed securities, mm -hmm. which is not good for mortgage interest rates. So okay. by them trying to kind of remedy that that situation, hopefully we will see that, you know, no one has the crystal ball, of course, right. which is why it's important to understand how those things correlate and why now is mm -hmm. still a very good time to have a conversation with your lender. Right. And I, you know, I think that, I think that people, people don't understand that historically we're still in a good spot. 5% is not the end of the world. Um, 6%, even 7%. These are historical mortgage rates that would be considered good. You know, what we've seen in the past, sure. though, is, is, you know, October of 81, we see 19 percent. Right. 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 That's, what, that's what we need to be worried about. So buying a home right now is, is still not a bad choice because, number one, interest rates could continue to go higher over the next. Absolutely could. Over the next five years as the Fed deals with the recession and as we see rates go up. And right. so I think it's important to realize that historically we're in a good spot. And we're also in a spot where... If you do get to a point you're buying the house, you're getting the mortgage at 6%, at some point in time, that mortgage could be refinanced. It's not right. forever. Right. Um, you know, so that rate is not, does not have to stay there right. forever. And uh, we see those, you know, those times. Right. They happen. So exactly. It'll come back. So that's, that's the other beautiful point. Hey, what, I'm at 5%. What happens if it goes down to 3%? Well, yeah. you refinance right. and you end up in a really good spot. Sure. Then your mortgage payment is dropping pretty significantly yes. probably at that point. Whereas, hey, what happens if I wait? Well, okay, you wait and rates go up to 7%, 8%. Right. Again, then you're definitely paying more. You're getting less bang for your buck when you purchase at home. Correct. Now on the flip side, I'm on the real estate side. People say, well, what about home prices? Right. right? I'm, if I wait, yeah, interest rates might go up, but you know, home prices will go down. And I think this is important to understand the difference between Knoxville 
and other places. Correct. Right? Yes. So Knoxville does not see the same volatility that places exactly. California, New York, I'm from Detroit. Those markets are going to see wild fluctuations. Um, I always talk back in 08, you know, in 08, in a two year period, Detroit itself lost something along the lines of 88% of its value in the city of Detroit. Mm -hmm. Now that is in the city of Detroit, not necessarily suburbs, but the city right. of Detroit lost 88% of their value in their yeah. homes. Knoxville lost 2% in one year and then 4% the next year. And then right. that was pretty much it. There was one other year where they dropped 2%, but that's Relatively not- Relatively flat. Yes, exactly. So I will always say this in these videos that we're doing, when is the best time to buy? It's now. now. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even matter when now is, it's now. Um, because you can always refinance and we're always gonna see prices over a seven year period increase, usually rather significantly. So always a good time to buy. Lindsay, what else do we need to cover in terms of impacts of, of the Fed and all that kind of stuff? So I think the other thing to just consider is make sure if you are already pre-approved with a lender, reach out to your lender, have a conversation about anything that has changed since you got that pre-approval. Talk to them this week. Um, you know, reach out, make that phone call, mm -hmm. see if things have changed in terms of, um, you know, your buying power, your qualification, things like that are really important. Just mm -hmm. have that conversation. Sure. And you know what, since we're just going on and on, let's just talk really quick about locking in rates. What is that process? And obviously it's pretty self-explanatory, I think, in terms of lock in rates. Right. Um, but how does one do that? How, what happens if rates change and go lower? What about locking in a rate? So when we lock in a rate, we can do that once you're officially under contract on a property. Okay. So you have to have an official bound contract with a closing date, and then we can lock the rate based on how much time you need to meet that closing, whether it's 30 days, 45 days, or 60 days. Um, we have those options. Okay. So got to have a contract to get the rate locked in. Is there a cost to lock my rate? There's not a cost to lock your rate in that, that time frame, up to 60 days. Okay. Um, if you do need something longer than that because you're doing new construction or something of that nature, we do have extended rate lock options that you can look into. So okay. those do have some costs associated with them. Great. And once I'm locked in, if rates go down, can I re-lock with no, no problem? No. So on okay. a, a normal lock, um, that 60-day lock, you're locking into that, that rate on that day. So if something happens and it goes lower before you're closing, no, we do not okay. typically um, go, go down that way. Okay. Here's where we're at. The Fed has raised the Fed fund rate again. It has had some impact on the market as a whole, as well as in the housing market in terms of the mortgage rates. Um, and we're going to continue to see the Fed uh, raising, probably raising rates again a couple times over the rest of the year. Now, the problem is, is we don't have a crystal ball. There's no way to 100% say, say where things are going to go. Are they going to go up? Are they going to go down? There are different mortgage professionals who believe that we're going to see lower interest rates by the end of the year. However, as a real estate professional, I can tell you, I think we're going to also see higher prices by the end of the year. So holding off and waiting are probably not in your best interest. In your best interest is going to be to get locked in on something that you know. It's about what do I know? What can I have secured? I think that was too, I think that was part of what led to the problem in, in 08, you know, if we're talking about this, it was right. a credit crisis, not necessarily a housing crisis. Correct. And the number of people who were getting adjustable rate mortgages. Oh, right. And absolutely. That, that was part of it. Okay. I can, what I can get in at 3% and then it's going to change and it's going to adjust. And I can pick what I want to pay. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's when, that's when you get into a problem. Absolutely. Whereas if you know, if you know, Hey, this is what I'm paying today and this is what I'll be paying five years from now, if you can get locked in that's gonna always be the best route to go, right? Absolutely, yes, because housing is only increasing. Rents are going up, right. you know, paying rent is 100% right. interest. Exactly, So. exactly. There's that. Yeah, absolutely. So there you go, I'm Matthew Parsons, Knox Real Estate Expert. You can reach me at 865-761-9797 and? Lindsay Whitworth with Mortgage Investors Group. You can reach me at 865 306 3725. Right. And if you're thinking about buying a house, she's going to be your first call. Your second call is going to be to me. All right. Or actually, maybe you should contact your spouse and have that conversation. But then <laughs> after you guys have had that conversation, then you call Lindsay, then you call me. If you're thinking about selling, 
call me. I'll help connect you with the people that you need moving forward. So there you go. Thanks again for joining us for the Mortgage Monday. Thank you and God bless.